Sorry about that. I'm back. I'm recording on my phone, and of course, my phone started to ring, and it cut the video in half. So, this is part two of Girl, Where You Been? If you haven't already watched the first part, go ahead and watch the first part, and then come back and see me on part two here. So, what I was saying is I had gotten into a place of wanting to be saved, it being a blind spot for me, and... I was not on purpose. I was out of order. And those things were misaligned. Because it wasn't that I wasn't supposed to have a life partner. Or it wasn't that I wasn't supposed to be with someone. That's not what I'm saying. Or it wasn't that I wasn't supposed to help my students. But my, my, my misalignment was that I had started to disappear. I was not showing up fully for myself. It wasn't that those things were not good. But what made them or, or what made me unwell was that I had started to disappear and I was unwell in the space i was unwell in the relationship and that's what the problem was so when i went back to the drawing board and kind of did an autopsy of everything i was like okay how did you disappear what made you unwell and what i found was two things in particular that caused me or were the seeds of unwellness for me because remember this channel this 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 endeavor is about wellness and liberation and for me to be first partaker of wellness and liberation i have to take the first bite before i can share it with you before i can share this morsel with you and for my 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 two points are I didn't speak up for myself. I didn't say no. When in the relationship, the person was like, okay, um, I don't like this about you. And yes, that was a thing. I don't like this about you. Or you, uh, something specific that was said to me was I asked too many questions or I, I'm, I'm, I'm changing my mind and what bothered me about that was I like to reflect on things. I like to have a conversation and then from the conversation, take it apart. What was said? What did I say? What did the person say? Do those things make sense? Because in the moment, sometimes those things don't, don't register until you can go back and kind of unpack them i'm a researcher i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm an analyst so i do that in my in my daily life as well because one thing wasn't matching and what was happening was i was being overwhelmed when we were in person when we were together everything was great everything was wonderful it was like this almost I've heard this phrase called love bombing, right? It was just knight in shining armor, just wonderful. Everything is perfect. But there were cracks in the mortar. And I was being overwhelmed, so I wouldn't notice the cracks, how we were not necessarily aligned. Because I feel... As I did an autopsy of that relationship, there were things in me that someone else needed that they had not done the work for themselves. It's like someone wanting the, the benefits or the reward of work that you've done, wanting to stand in a spotlight with you, wanting to sit at the table with you. And when the bill comes, they step out of the light 
or they go to the bathroom or they they don't they don't split the bill with you they don't take the bill from you right so it had become that i was overwhelmed with the wonderfulness of what the possibility of the relationship could be without understanding that there was a whole lot of misalignment and for me to be aligned, I would have to disappear. But the person didn't want me to leave, right? There's a difference between leaving and disappearing. Some of us disappear and we're still present. Some of us disappear and we're standing right in the middle of the room because we're not showing up whole. We're not showing up free. We're not showing up. We're not speaking up. And the more I reflected on the things that were happening, the conversations that we were having, the experiences that I was having, and I was uneasy. I was, I was unwell after. I was not fulfilled. There was not enough joy to sustain moment to moment. And when I went back to the person and said, this is what I see. This is how I feel. This is what I know. Things really started to fall apart. There was a lot of blame. There was a lot of shame. There was a lot of emotional violence. And what I know is that if there is emotional violence, Along the way, if you don't get out, they'll become physical violence. And for me, that's a red flag. I know right now it's a whole lot of red flag stuff going on on the internet. I'm not a part of that because my thing is there's no one way to name a red flag. Because if it's not a red flag for you, mind your business. Just saying. We got to know what our red flags are. How we show up as a red flag, that's our healing work, friends. That's the healing work for us. What's a red flag is a trigger. What's a red flag shows up as some type of trauma that is unhealed. That's all it is. So if we're out here naming red flags and others, be careful. Be careful. Because I in all of this, had to recognize the part that I was playing in the relationship. And what I had to do as I ended the relationship was say, I'm sorry. I led you to believe that this was okay for me. And it's not. I am not able to sustain the level of the level of need that you have because I am no longer showing up for myself. I'm depleted. I am not well here. And for me to be unwell and to stay dishonors me. I will no longer dishonor myself and stay in a relationship with you. Not saying that you're a bad person, but you're just not a good fit for me. I wish you wellness and I wish you find what you're looking for because I'm not it. And I'm okay with that. And I had to move on. I had to uh, forgive myself. Friends, I had known throughout the relationship that there were signs, right? That's what we call these red flags. There were signs that, hey, there's a misalignment here. You know, you shouldn't always be annoyed. <laughs> or I'm looking at the phone and I'm like, oh. We're going to argue as the phone is ringing and I'm looking at your number and I know it's you because I've saved your name and your number in my phone. And I'm like, oh my God, we're going to argue about something. 
that's a misalignment because wellness should get easy after a while. And when you are attuned and aligned with yourself, everything that is well within you is about the ease of that. in that relationship, I've realized that I was willing to accommodate for the sake of the relationship, sacred things and places and uh, knowing about myself. One of the biggest uh, contentions in the relationship that I had with this person was that I'm a spiritualist. And what I mean by a spiritualist, and this is my declaration, I am not a Christian. I perform, believe, and live by African traditional spiritual practices. Um, I don't call them religions because Africans did not have religions. They had a lifestyle. And by being a spiritualist, this is my lifestyle. And uh, part, of, part of the contention in the relationship was that my spiritual practices caused me to be well. They caused me to be blessed. They caused me to be whole. They free me. And the person had recognized this level of freedom and this level of wholeness in me, but did not want me to practice my my religious or my spiritual practices. It bothered the person that, you know, for me, I honor my ancestors. I actually literally have an altar for my ancestors, those that have passed on, like my father and my grandmother, my aunts, my 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 elder relatives and kinfolk. Because it's not just about my bloodline, right? It's about those kinfolk that are in my, my, my ancestry that love on me, that guide me, that speak to me. And yes, I literally mean speak to me because I listen. So I honor them. And every day, that is a part of my spiritual practice is I sit, I light my incense, I light my candles, and I listen. I say thank you. I say I love you. I say their names, and I talk with them, and I say, hey, where are we going in this in this space? Where are we, what are we doing? And I wait for an answer because in my lineage, in my heritage, in my family line, in my kinship, there are lessons. And these are the lessons that I share with you. So the second thing that I wanted to say and to share on the way to becoming well again is that this channel is about my stories and about the lessons that I learned. And these lessons come from my spiritual practices using African traditional spirituality because I am a spiritualist and I make that declaration openly to you. The lesson that I learned while I was away was that when I can't declare and name. Remember, there's a there's a video about naming, defining, and if I have to defend, this is me naming, defining, but I won't defend. Okay. I'm a spiritualist. I know of and in my past have practiced other types and forms of religions, including Christianity. This is not the space. Christianity is, 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 is shows up 
There's spiritual monikers that I use in different ways because I'm a church baby. I have to honor that part of me as well as those things that were in my, in my ancestry, remember? But I can't stop there. I was born in New Orleans. I'm a NOLA girl. You know, all of the ground, all of the work, all of the history of New Orleans is in my bloodline. It's in my body. And when I started to dig through and honoring my ancestors, I couldn't stop at the church. I had to move further into my city. But I also had to go back because I'm of the diaspora. There are Africans in my bloodline. There are people that were taken from the continent, brought here on slave ships. My mom found one of my ancestors that was brought here and landed in Virginia. So these are the people that I honor on this channel because they are the reason why I'm well. Because I have been led up until this point in my life to African spiritual practices. And I would be misaligned if I did not share that and name that and define that for you because that's what this channel is about it's about wellness it's about liberation but it is to the fullest degree of that liberation that i use and i practice my african spirituality so uh for me in the defining of that for you i use nature-based practices i look to nature i look at the seasons changing because right now i am in love with the cold where i am in uh in this in the city it is about 50 degrees i absolutely love it because for me it's october it is the the third harvest and we'll talk about that at some point but it is also right before the sleepiness or the dormantness of the world happens where we get to go within we get to go inside the heart that's lit the heart is the fireplace for those of you who don't know what that is you know we're making hearty soups i made an an okra stew the other day it made me well so for me, it is this time, even in nature, where we're going within. We're going to be locked up. We're going to be bundled up. Like I said, I got my blanket. You know, we're going to be covered. We're going to be hidden. And in this time, for me, what that symbolizes is that it is definitely time for us to go within to the things that make us well, to unearth the things that has caused us trauma and for us to unveil those things to ourselves first in order for us to unveil them to the world. So for me, I had to share that with you and it is not to offend anyone it is not to draw a hard line in the sand, but it is definitely to draw a line in the sand. Because as I desire wellness for myself, I also desire wellness for you. And if this is not the space for you, I say, be well and be blessed. Because in this space, I have been led because of this new revelation for me to share with you those things that make me well. And that is possibly 
talking about ancestors and spirit, which could make some people with different diverse religious practices, including Christianity, uh, a little uncomfortable. And I respect that. So if those things are uh, not for you, I'm okay with that. Because this may not be the space for you. Because what I am understanding more and more in this call to be on purpose is that my spirit, the spirit, my ancestors and spirit guides are saying, you have been unwell because you have not declared with your mouth who you are to the world. I'm a tune day. A tune day means we have returned. All pieces and parts of myself in wholeness or oneness are right here, right now. And it would not have happened if it had not been for the ways in which I have understood and practiced my spirituality. So. I named that for you so that if it can be for a disclaimer reason or if it is for a um, uh, just a, 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 a warning, whatever that means for you, you can pause it, you can stop it, or you can move on, right? But what I will make sure that I do not do is to debate or argue or to have to challenge anyone about what I believe because here's the thing friends one thing and you know I'm not a spring chicken I'm a young one I'm a youngin what I've learned in the the time that I've been here is that when I show up whole and I show up me can't nobody be me in my in my world, in my game. I, I tell my students, I say, I'm Michael Jordan in my life. I'm the I'm on it. I'm the best me. And for me to be the best me, even here in this new space, because friends, this was scary for me. I have lots of friends, lots of people that are in various stages and uh, 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 rankings, levels of, of their own spirituality and practice. But what I want to make sure is that I honor you all, but I don't dishonor myself. Because, like I said, every relationship is a lesson. And what I learned, even in the most intimate way, is that if I dishonor myself, I can't do the work. I'm not doing the work that spirit has called me to do. You know, in uh, parts of my life, I've, I was uh, an ordained minister. A tune day what? Yeah. But what I realized is that being ordained in a organization or in a religious practice is for me someone else recognizing the call and the purpose on my life. But it does not restrict my my call to them. So for me, when someone uh, recognized that I was called to do something, I was on purpose to do something, it did not lock me into some form of godliness or religious practice. Because what I realized is that my call, my purpose was not given by those that recognized it. It was already there. 
for them to see. They just called it out. And actually, in them calling it out, it was always a confirmation of what I already knew. Yet another way of me naming and declaring, I'm a spiritualist. So, with all of those things being said, and by the way, I gave my collar back. <laughs> For me, it was not to dishonor them. Because I knew that the work that I was called and am called to do was much bigger than the confines of the religiosity of where I was. And I loved them. And I still do. I'm still in contact with them. Um, but I'm no longer aligned with them because it was out of order. It was misaligned with where spirit was taking me. Okay. So all of that being said, that's where I've been. That's what I've been doing. Getting myself together so that I can be better with you, not for you, but show you a better me. Uh, I don't know if any of y'all know this. I got my hair a little different. Child, I had been hiding from myself. Yes, this is extra. When I was a little girl, about four or five years old, from here to about right here, I was bald, like bald like this. All of my hair had fallen out right here. I can literally put my hand over it. And it's still kind of thin here. But she coming back. And even in those little things, I was wearing my, my hair pieces. And trust me, friends, she might come back. You know, she here today. You know. But I had to uncover myself to myself even in the most basic way. And I like what this looks like. We might be wearing this for a little while. So that's all I have for you today. Oh, one more thing. The ways in which I possibly will share with you are the knowings and the, the lessons and the messages that I get from spirit through the ways in which I practice my spirituality. And what that can look like is several things. And I am to I am here to say this. I am not a medium. That ain't the work that spirit has called me to do. I know some. I am not an astrologer. I am I am not of the of the work that those people those those blessed people or, or, or present to do. But I do use certain tools and resources that I'm going to share with you all. I believe that my work and my piece in this great puzzle that the universe has, has given a lot of us to do because there has been an awakening in the spirit realm. If you have not noticed, there is a lot of people especially black women tapping into their spiritual practices of the ancestors practicing African spiritual practices. I've actually been on this journey of African spirituality since, Oh, I'm about to tell, tell you my age about 10 years now. So it's not anything new for me. It's something that I have settled with. It is something that has settled in me. Something that I know is good for me and something that works for me. So, but I am so excited that so many of us women, black women, are tapping into our ancestry, are tapping into this inner knowing that we've always known, our intuition, our inner knowledge, 
our ancestral knowledge, right? The ways in which we know. Because it's always been there, but there have been uh, less connective tissue, if I can use that as a term, to uh, uh, help us, to grow us, okay? And when I first started looking at African uh, spirituality, I looked through nature-based practices, and for me, they were white. Uh, Wicca, um, and, and that's a whole journey right there to, to even name that I looked in and researched Wiccan, and that's not for me. That, that is not a part of my practice. I honor and uh, s send blessings to those of you that do, because I understand it. It is just not my practice. Uh, but that was the journey because it wasn't a lot of black nature-based spiritualist type of things that are as mainstream as they are now. When I started my journey in uh, knowing and searching for um, spirituality or spiritualism or, or, or my, my own definition and my own understanding of what African <coughs> <coughs> traditional, y'all hear it? It was worse than that, child. African traditional spirituality is. And now the internet is a blessing because that's where I started. And then I started looking into my own lineage. Like I said, I'm a New Orleans baby. And I had to look at, you know, where I came from. I have Haitian roots. I had to look at all my peoples and what they practiced and what they believed and what they knew and what they did, right? So there's an amalgamation or this alchemy or this transmutation of, of practices, taking what people used to call evil or sometimes still do, or bad, witchcraft, voodoo, all of those uh, cautionary words. Um, like I said, mediums, cautionary words. And I had to really confront that. Hell, <laughs> you know, all of those things. Are, are you are you crossing the line? And for me, it was an absolute yes. Because I needed to know what was on the other side. And when I got there, it was the most scary yet liberating place to be. And I say scary because black folks don't talk about hoodoo and voodoo and herbology and you know we just don't do that but we do I had to look at on the continent all the different ways and practices and beliefs on the continent of Africa the ways in which our people because we're still searching for our people for our lineage our connective tissue back to the continent, you know, the Orisha, the African, uh, the, the continent of Africa has so many diverse practices, spiritual practices. And for me, I've looked at the Orisha, which is not for all of the continent of Africa, right? Because we need to understand the diaspora has transmuted or alchemized or added to for their own security, safety, and well-being, by the way. Lukumi, Santeria, those were our ways of hiding within plain sight our African traditional practices from the colonizers. And those things became evil, devil worship, witchcraft. But those were our ancestral ways of being. So I had to go back and look at those things and research those things. And some of those things will come up here 
and we'll talk about them here and what they could possibly mean for you here. So the last thing I want to leave with you is that, like I said, the resources and the tools. I look at tarot cards. Yes, I have several decks. I use sister resources and what I will do at from time to time is share the wonderful sisters, sister girlfriends that are also online that have helped me on my journey. One of them being the Queen Poe, bless you sister. Um, there's another young lady, another young sister. Her name is Ife and Ife is awesome. You know, I have another young sister that is from my hometown. Her name is Tasha Abare. And I'm probably saying her, her name wrong. A-B-A-R-A. -A -A, Abara. These young sisters are on point and on topic and on purpose. So, that's what I've been doing. Minding my business, separating myself from those things that no longer serve me, but also being intentional about making sure that wellness is not contaminated with this uh, secret or, or with this veiled uh, unknowing. Because I feel like you all need to know who I am, what I'm doing, because that is the story. And without telling the full story, because I know it, that is a disservice to you. So friends, be well, be whole, be on purpose. Don't let anything or anyone come into your sphere of wellness, your bubble. Because remember, we're going within. It's getting cold outside, baby. Cuffing season. Watch who you let in your house. Just saying. Don't let anyone come into your sphere of wellness that are misaligned and not attuned with who you are and who you know yourself to be. That's all I have for real this time. Remember, if you missed part one, go back and look at that. This is part two to the part when my phone started ringing. But anyway, my promise to you is to record at least one video a week, something, so that we stay in touch, that we stay in contact. We in the living sanctuary today under a blanket with my dog, Bella, who under her blanket. But we back. We ready. We're whole. We free. I'm a tune day. And this has been my story. Have a wonderful day, friends.